this isn't exactly what you want to uh, meet up the drive on your way into the farm in the morning. Looks like we're gonna have some fun. Back in now, thank God. What are you saying? Not happy. Well, that was an exciting start to the day. Wasn't really expecting that. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This is part two of this week's video. This week's video got really long. So if you haven't seen the first half, what are you doing? Go back and watch it. If you have, thank you very much. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and a subscribe and then stay tuned for a bit more. If you're watching at the beginning of the video, you'll have seen these little beauties got out. Not really sure how they managed it because the gate was still bolted. I'll show you how essentially well I found it. Um, but they don't half look well. They look better in the shed, but they look well. Here's the gate. Essentially, they'd managed to get this bolt, this silver one, undone without doing that latch. So it was still out. Amazing. I don't know how they managed to do it, but they did. So now we've got a chain round it. Honestly, it's like Alcatraz. So we've took the shuttering down on the other shed, and I'll show you that wall in a minute. There's a bit of a mishap in it, but it'll all be fine. We're going to put it up on this back wall here now, and we've made these brackets to catch it in with on either side. So we're just in the process of bolting all of this up. We've got another one of these two foot panels and then a one foot panel to go on top, take us up to seven foot. But I thought I'd show you the lattice before it gets covered up. So we've just put a rebar drilled into the floor and created a lattice. There's four of these crossbars going along here. Yeah, and it's up to about five foot high. So should be pretty sturdy. So we've got it all up now, seven foot high to the top. And you can see there's obviously a gap between there and the cladding. And what we'll do is those blocks that Dad cleaned, we'll put a couple of rows of blocks on the top of this uh, once it's been shuttered in. It's actually a good job that we got that done because we rang up Alpha Mix. We're not going to mix our own concrete for that because it's quite a big one. It's quite wide. It's quite tall. So we've got uh, Alpha Mix, which is one of them like mix on site guys. They're coming from Margaret Harbour to fill it and they got a space tomorrow morning. So Friday morning, we're gonna fill that bad boy with concrete and leave it over the weekend, which means that by Monday, we should be able to take the shuttering down and put it up on the side wall. It's what we're planning anyway. But for now, I'm going to bed. Well, not quite to bed, but I'm going home. Bit of a damp and dreary, horrible morning here this morning. Bit dull, it's just about brightening up now. I fed round, these guys have had the silage and so has everyone else, about feed them their cereal. I've got to get some straw. Um, on the trailer from up the top that was we've took out of a barn from a couple of years ago and hopefully I should get some breakfast in before the concrete lorry comes which is at half ten um, so better crack on someone actually once asked me why do I feed all the cattle uh, in the morning before I have my own breakfast and I think it's quite a simple question to answer if I can have my breakfast whenever I want like I can stop and go inside and have something to eat Cows can't. Cows can only have their breakfast if you feed them their breakfast. Just got to get the trailer out of the corner. Yeah, so if, if I didn't feed them, they'd go hungry. And if they go hungry, they don't grow. So the most important thing to get fed in the morning is the cows, followed by myself. So that's why all the animals get fed before I get fed. That's the way you should be. And that's the last group fed for the morning. Hopefully, we'll get these girls weighed. These are the finishing heifers. I'd like to get them weighed at some point today, if we can. It's been a couple of weeks, so nice to see where they're at. Should be one or two about ready to go. While I was here, I thought I'd just show you, this is the concrete wall that we shut it in last week, and we took it down, and you can see our little mishap there. Essentially, some of the cement has, or the concrete has just sat on top of the rebar. There's just a little bit of a blemish there. We're gonna have, we'll fill that in, and uh, you won't notice it's there. It's just annoying. Should have tapped it a bit harder with the hammer. One of those things. Something else I should point out, just to give her a bit of a shout out, is Mum's painted all of these Yorkshire boardings along this shed. And they look dead smart, don't they? So we're just up the yard now. These are some bales that I took out of the barn so I could stack some big square bales in there. And they have been in the barn for a couple of years, so they're just a bit ropey, a bit sort of the netting starting to break a little bit on one or two. And then one's there, they're interesting. They're about half the size and they were on the bottom. So all the pressure has made them shrink. Um, but these are the ones I'm using up these first so that they are out of the way so we don't have a mess all winter. Got to load them onto the trailer. Last one. 
don't want to overload this trailer too much um, because these bales are a little bit fragile and I don't want to have to clean up a load of mess on my yard when they fall off. Shutterings all finished, the last little bits have been done and as if by magic, the Alpha McFlurry has turned up. It's the first load going in now, Daz is bringing it in. I'll guide him in and I'm in charge of the shovel, which I best get out of the way, actually. Keep going. A bit more. Forward a bit. So essentially what's happening is, we're filling up the bucket and then shoveling it, raking it, tipping it into the shuttering and we're doing bucket full at a time. If you've never seen one of these machines before, they're pretty amazing. Essentially you've got onboard water, cement and sand and they mix it to whatever ratio you want and however much you want you just pay for what you use. Give them a call. Numbers on there. Second bucket load about ready. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but we're about one cubic metre in and we're just about, I'd say we're about five foot high currently. That side we've not got so much in there. We're going to go put that side next. And there we go. Filled in. Not smoothed off too much because we want to put those blocks on the top. But all done and hopefully by Monday that'll be ready and we can take those shuttering down and put them in this hole here for the next wall. So now that's over we're gonna go have a quick coffee and then I'm gonna go weigh them heifers which I'm quite excited about I'm not gonna lie. Come on. Come on out. If you haven't seen this before, essentially, cow comes down, we catch his head, weigh it, stick it in the machine. Just like this. So now the cows are all weighed, they're all on here. This will sink to the computer in the office and we can actually look at how big they've got and how fast they're growing and whether we need to send some for slaughter. I've just been for my lunch and while I was on lunch I uploaded all of the information off of the iPad onto the computer and looked at uh, how the animals are growing and what rate they're growing since we last weighed them and so on and so forth and there are still some animals on there that are absolutely charging on it like 2.2, 2.3 kilos a day um, but some of them are now dialing back a little bit and going to like 1.8 there's a couple that are down at 1.5 and I don't really like them to drop much lower than that. Even on those heifers, they really are absolutely motoring, but they are still growing. So, which is good. And while still growing, there's still a bit of money in them. Um, but they are now, as a general rule, bar two or three at a killing weight. So those that are keep growing really fast, we'll keep them um, and keep them growing because while they're growing real fast, you're going to be making some money. And those that are slowing down, any of them uh, that are at a killing weight, we we'll might now start a look at putting some of them in the bank. And that's pretty good because at this time of year, once you've taken into consideration the hanging time, you are essentially looking at a bit of a bonus on the Christmas trade. So that's something to look forward to. But um, what I'm going to now do this afternoon is I've got some milling to do because I'm nearly out of my uh, finishing ration. So I'm going to mill some bits and pieces and I've got some general odds and sods to get sorted out because we've had a corn lorry uh, ring us up. They want to come first thing uh, tomorrow morning. So dad might load that while I feed the cows and so on and so forth. So we've got to just like take some of the blowers out of the corn and whatever else. So we're going to do all of that this afternoon. So we're ready for tomorrow morning. Just realise excitingly is my first chance to actually properly use this new weigher. So what we've got trying to do is we're trying to get 0.45 of a ton of oats in the bucket and we want 0.45 to show up there. So what we have to do is we scoop it up and we pull it through the cycle. We've got 0.44. Doesn't get much better than that. I'm also going to want 
1300 kilograms of barley and I won't get that all in one bucket so I can test what I've got. 0.86, so now I know that I'm gonna need whatever that is to finish that off. I've gotta do some maths. If you've not had a chance to see this big bad mill going yet, then you're gonna be in for a treat because I'm gonna show you right now. But first things first, I've put the oats into the trailer and I'm gonna put my dust mask on because I am not getting all that dust on my lungs. And it, I always wear my dust mask. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. If it's dusty, my dust mask goes on because it is not worth getting all that stuff on your chest. They're not comfortable, but they are essential. So yeah, always wear one. Oh. And I did the maths, I need another 440 kilos. I'll do my best to make myself heard, but essentially the oats will come down there, into there, up that auger, and into the top of the mill, which will then get filled and drop into that hopper underneath. That's the plan. So now the hopper's full, I've turned the auger off, I have to turn the mill on here. So I'll turn the mill on. Right, and it's quite quiet at the minute. It runs quiet when it's empty. But once I've actually let the corn into the mill. Uh, you won't be able to hear yourself think, but the speed at which it mills is mad, and I'll show you. So whilst that mill's running, you can hear it in the background, I'm gonna sort the uh, bits and pieces out for this wheat, which is going in the morning. This is a milling wheat that we've sold. Um, Hagberg of 419, for anyone who knows what Hagberg's is, it's a falling weight. That's really good. Anything above 250 is good. 419 is very good, which is why the millers are after this stuff for making bread and whatnot. So I'm gonna sort this out and then do some more milling. Before I go home tonight, however, uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually write in the Farmers Weekly. I have a regular column, write about every month, five weeks. I'm the one with no hair, believe it or not. And uh, this week I am writing about the farm business review that you can get for free as long as you are a farmer receiving bps payments you can get it for free and down here is the link to go and get yourself a farm review it's paid for by defra go and do it it's free what farmer doesn't like free things it is now saturday morning i didn't show you any more million because it got dark and i didn't show you loading the corn because it was dark and you couldn't see anything on the video but essentially that's all done cows are all fed and what I'm now doing, I'm now in the egg packery. So the room that we pack all the eggs in, I've never really spoken about chickens and I will do a full video on my chickens. I don't have many, I'm not like a big producer. But to get this certified as an egg packery by the trading standards and, and all that, and the environmental agency, um, I have to comply with some legislation and I've got to get this sink put in um, because I need somewhere to wash my equipment. So I'm just making a framework for that and then once i've done that today i'll probably try and take it a bit easier for the rest of the weekend but let's go look essentially what i'm trying to do is i've got this sink i'm going to make a little metal frame i'm going to mount the sink somewhere here and then drop the waste into this well because it has to all be taken away properly and then i've got to have i've got to just do some buffering up around the door to make it vermin proof and then just here i've got to have a hashed area so that there's like a clean area and a dirty area. So you come into that bit and you change into clean clothing and you come into this part of the shed for packing eggs on here because this is obviously, it's all concrete and it's all concrete wall. So it's washable and cleanable and everything. I comply with all the regulations for um, paperwork currently, but I just need to have the room spick and span ready for the inspection. So I've knocked up this little square frame, just tacked it together. Hopefully it'll sit perfectly over this. Look at that, living the dream. So I'll just stick some legs on that, weld that up properly, a couple of bracings, and then I'll put a bit across so I can have a shelf underneath it. But that will now hold my sink in place just here. I'll move that out of the way. Good stuff. So here's the finished article. Essentially, I've made it out of uh, an old 20 mil box section hurdle that a student ran over a few years ago and absolutely killed it and it, we just kept it for some spare steel. So I've used it. I've had to put these braces on the outside though, because if I put them on the inside, it'd upset the sink. And the idea, I've got those little bars across there and I'll be able to put a shelf underneath as well to put any like disinfectants or whatever on. Hopefully, if we're lucky, we can go and put it down the shed and make sure it fits before we paint it. Right, and there we go. Sits in there perfectly. So now I just need to take it out again, paint it, 
and well run that water round to here put a heater on the wall for the water because i have to have hot water in here and then i'll take the drain out and put it into there but probably not today get that painted and then i can have a rest right guys that is it for another week thank you very much for watching those of you who had your hearing aids in and the first part of the first video will have noticed that i actually said i was going to go look at some cows this week and i didn't go and the reason why i didn't go is because my week didn't quite go to plan and the farmer who i was going to see his week didn't quite go to plan either but uh, we're planning on now going next wednesday which is really cool because we're thinking about changing a few things within suckler herd um, we're going to go see what he's doing quite excited about it but if i can do videos i will it's completely up to him though um, he might not want me to but yeah, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it'd really help me out. But until next time, have a good one.